Well, there's an old saying that it's not what you know, it's who you know. And in San Francisco politics, that can translate into well-connected insiders quietly getting quick approval for pet projects without having to report their lobbying. Well, now San Francisco City Attorney Dennis Herrera is teaming up with Board of Supervisors President David Chu to strengthen city ethics rules and require more disclosure by lobbyists, permit expediters, and other city hall power brokers. Earlier today, I talked with City Attorney Herrera about his proposal. City Attorney Herrera, good to see you. Thanks good for coming in. Good to see you, in. Scott. My pleasure. So, ethics. Uh, why do we need these additional disclosure rules now? I think what you find, you know, San Francisco has always been a leader when it comes to sunshine, transparency, but you need differing laws uh, for, for different times. And the laws that we have had on the books, based on the experience of Supervisor Chu and I, in this age, we determined that they needed updating. So what's changed? Like, why now? Because some of these complaints have been around for a while about yeah. lawyers not disclosing and so on. Yeah, I think because based on the shared experience uh, and what you hear and what you see through experience since the last round of changes, you, know, you see that there are loopholes, that there are gaps, and that there are things that you can do to tighten them up, which is going to inspire confidence in the public about the integrity of their government. I think that everybody wants some transparency so they know what's going on at City Hall. So whenever you hear we have to tighten up ethics and close the loopholes, you, you think, well, there's corruption then. Is, is that what's happening? Is there, what, what exactly is it? No, I don't, I don't think there's necessarily um, corruption. Uh, but there is certainly, you hear complaints from people when you're going around the city about a certain opaqueness and their belief that um, while people might not be violating the law, that there are some folks that have special access or inside access and anything that can inspire confidence in the public that though there is transparency, there is a full debate, you have an equal opportunity to do something, I think that's a good thing. Is it fair to say that one of the big loopholes here that you want to close applies to attorneys who are not required and do not disclose when they're lobbying on behalf of a client? Absolutely, that is one of the things that we've um, uh, uh, that we've closed. If you look at the way the law was prior, it just said a lawyer who is ordinarily conducting business that a lawyer would, they didn't have to report. Now it's been tightened, so it's only lawyers that are involved in actual or potential litigation that don't have uh, have to report. So it will deal with lawyers in the other contexts. Now it's been widely reported that one of the attorneys who would have to disclose and register, presumably, is, is Willie Brown. Uh, would you agree? Is he someone who would be affected by this? He may or may not be. I, I, don't, I don't know what uh, Mayor Brown's practice is. He hasn't had to require uh, to date, but he, as any other lawyer, um, myself, if I was out in private practice, if, if I was actually out uh, lobbying city officials and it wasn't actual potential litigation, that lawyer would have to register irrespective of, of who they are. But these laws were not designed for uh, any particular individual. It was really to look at the shared experience that we had here in San Francisco and also see what best practices are in place in other cities and jurisdictions to make sure we're doing the best we can to have transparency and openness. Fair to say San Francisco is behind other places like, say, Los Angeles and San Diego. In certain, in certain respects, Chicago, San Diego, Los Angeles, they have things that promote greater transparency when it comes to law. We, we have less transparency than Chicago. We do, <laughs> we do. The, actually, the um, uh, the lawyer exception, the exception that you were just referring to, comes out of uh, Chicago. We learn from how Chicago does things. So there are things you learn from other jurisdictions, and those are things we were trying to implement as best practices here. So one of the other issues is permit expediters, and, and these have been widely reported. People and the building inspections and the whole permit process is a mess in San Francisco. You don't have to talk to many people to find out people who have tried to do work on their home and they just get stuck in this morass of rules and delay. So wh why, why them? What is it about the work they do that you feel has to be more disclosed and more open? I think that what you hear is uh, something that we've all gone through. We see what happens when we all try and get a, a, a permit. Uh, we shouldn't have to have permit expediters to allow us to do work on our house. Any, any resident should be able to go down and get a permit they need to do an improvement and on their house. And in most places you can. And in a lot of places you can. But there is a perception that uh, you need a permit expediter, and a permit expediter has some uh, special influence. So we have expanded the reporting and uh, uh, what has to be reported for permit expediters so people have some confidence. Permit expediters, attorneys, Willie Brown, uh, 
You and David Chu ran for mayor uh, against Ed Lee, who of course is a, a big, uh, being supported by, by Rose Pack and Willie Brown. So what, what would you say to someone who says, this is payback by two guys who lost to, uh, to Ed Lee? Nothing could be further from the truth. I can tell you, uh, Mayor Lee, uh, myself, others, we want to do whatever we can to inspire confidence in the public for what we all do at uh, City Hall. These were uh, things that are systemic, not uh, uh, directed at any individual, and Dave and I have been working on this for eight to ten months to come up with a comprehensive thing, that a comprehensive scheme that everybody uh, can be confident in. I want to ask you about another issue you've been involved in this past week, and that is alleged patient dumping by Nevada into California and other states. What's the status of that, and what are you hoping to get out of this investigation? Well, I think that everybody can agree, whether you're an elected official or not, that the conduct that we've read about with respect to the, uh, a Nevada-based hospital is deplorable. No one should have to live in those conditions. So um, I'm expecting from Nevada that within the next week or so, they will respond to my first round of public records requests, and we'll be able to get some documents documentation and facts to see how many um, uh, psychiatric patients were actually put on with a one-way ticket on a Greyhound bus here to San Francisco. And if I determine that there are city taxpayer dollars that were spent, we will uh, seek retribution from Nevada. And just, just quickly, uh, they announced a change this week. They're going to have chaperones now on the buses. They're not going to be on by their own. Is that an admission of guilt, do you think, or is that enough? Well, I, I think that what you've seen... Um, from the statements coming out of Nevada, from the governor himself. He, he admits that this was occurring, that people were disciplined. We'll get to the bottom of it and see what we're going to do next. All right, City Attorney Dennis Herrera, thanks so much. Thank you, Scott.